Recently, I came across a video of Jacob Collier talking about the fully diminished chords and how he calls them a four-way crossroads of sorts and how you can take one diminished chord and end up in four different keys. And at first, I didn't really understand this concept after he explained it and demonstrated it, so I took time at my piano to understand it for myself. And after I fully understood it, I decided to make a video about it just in case somebody else didn't understand it and I could potentially help them. So if you ever wanted to know how to do a diminished chord modulation, this is how you do it. Now let me show how all these modulations sound. For simplicity's sake, we'll be in the key of C. So we'll take a C fully diminished chord. We'll take that C, move it down to a B, and that takes us to E major. We'll go back to the C diminished chord, but this time we'll take the E flat, move that down to a D, and that takes us to G major. Back to C diminished. We'll take the G flat, move that down to an F, and that takes us to B flat major. And the last one, we'll go back to C diminished, take the B double flat, put that down to B flat double flat, B triple flat, and that takes us to D flat major. Let's go over some basics first. Before you understand what a diminished chord modulation is, you need to understand what a diminished chord is. So let's go over the types of chords just real quick. Chord qualities are defined by the distances between the notes that make them up. For instance, C major is made up of the root C, the major third E, which is four half steps up from the root, one, two, three, four, and a fifth that is three half steps up from the major third, one, two, three. And that's what makes up every major chord, whether it be C, D, or E, or any of the other ones. Diminished chords is what we're talking about here today. So what defines a diminished chord? So diminished chords are a root followed by a minor third, which is three half steps, one, two, three, followed by three more half steps, one, two, three, and that makes up a diminished triad. But today we're talking about fully diminished chords, which adds another three half steps. One, two, three. And that's what makes up a, diminished, a fully diminished seventh chord. This can be applied to any note just following the same formula. If you went from G and went up three half steps, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now we have a G fully diminished seventh chord. What you also need to know is the concept of cadences, and specifically the authentic cadence. There are four different types of cadences, but the one that we're focusing on today is the authentic cadence, which is a 5, specifically a 5-7 chord, resolving down to a 1 chord, such as this. All you have to do is take your 1 chord, your tonic chord, in this case C, go to the 5th note, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and your major chord based off of that fifth note. In our case, G major. And because we're talking about five seven chords, you're gonna want to throw a minor seventh on top of that, which in this case is F. Once you have your five seven chord, the voice leading is pretty simple. The seventh note resolves down, the leading tone resolves up. And it ends up sounding like this. So the reason why this diminished chord modulation works so well is because you're turning this diminished chord into one of four combinations of a 5-7 chord to lead you into a new key. So you're turning the diminished chord and using that diminished chord in, as a gateway into a authentic cadence. Well, that's not a cute frame to end on. Anyway, I was editing this and I didn't like how I just explained that. I didn't think it was clear enough and made enough sense. So I'm going to try again, but uh, better. Western harmony is built upon the concept of tension and release, and certain chords give off a feeling of tension, and certain chords give off a feeling of release after that tension. What we're doing is we're taking the C diminished chord, altering the one note, and by altering that one note, we're turning it into four different dominant seven chords. And now these dominant seven chords are now functioning as five sevens of their new key. And now because of our concept of tension and release that we were talking about, we have our diminished chord, which is very unstable, followed up by the dominant 5-7 chord, which is also really unstable, being followed by the release of 
the home tonic chord, which is the most release that you can get in a key. So it creates this very satisfying resolution that leads you up into one of four new keys. I think that made more sense. Well, now that you have that knowledge, I hope you wield your fully diminished chords wisely because they have a lot of power. That means you have a lot of responsibility. Treat them nice. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other music theory concepts or topics you want me to talk about, put them in the comments and uh, I'll read them and if I like them, I'll talk about them. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and, you know, do the YouTube things. And I'll uh, see you guys next time. Catch you later.